The internet is no strange place for oddities or shady business. With billions of people crossing paths on any individual platform each day, there is no shortage of questionable things that go on online. To investigate in today's video, we're going to be looking at one of those internet oddities that leads down a rabbit hole of one of Reddit's very first mysteries. While this mystery has been no stranger to speculation online, very few people have sought to actually create a cohesive narrative for the events surrounding this. What I seek to do today in this video is give you all the details, tell the story, and then give analysis on the events surrounding the Lake City Quiet Pills incident. While we will discuss the main theories of this, I want to remain a skeptic for the sake of uncovering the truth, as I think it's important here to focus on what we actually know rather than get carried away into Spooksville. So that being said, that's what we're going to do. We're going to tackle this incredibly detailed internet mystery, so sit back and enjoy as we dive straight into this. The trailhead for this rabbit hole revolves around the Reddit user named Religion of Peace, who joined Reddit back in 2007. He was most known on Reddit as a bit of an elder for his service in the military, but also infamously known as a moderator of the r slash jailbait subreddit, which was a subreddit dedicating to posting photos of questionably underage girls, but more on that later. Religion of Peace post history is extensive and crude. There's so much to dig through here to set the stage for the events that unfold that before we even talk about quiet pills, we need to understand exactly who this guy was to save us some confusion down the line. Also, for further reference, Religion of Peace is the same thing as ROP or Milo. The same person. That's all you need to know. Got it? Good. Let's go. Our first post I would like to highlight is from June 6, 2009. Here on a post commemorating the 65th anniversary of D-Day, what follows is a top comment from the user Religion of Peace who chimes in explaining his experience on D-Day. I'm not going to read through this post because it's not very important, but all you need to know is that he claims to be 79 at the time of this post, putting him at age 14 during D-Day, which is seriously questionable. While many people enlisted in world wars below the age of 18, this is still something I highly doubt as we have nothing but this guy's word to go off of, but what completely debunks this is the fact that if you manage to dig up all the way back into this guy's post history, you would find an Ask Reddit thread in which he says that his age was 70 the year prior. This completely debunks his age, which I haven't seen a single other person talk about on the subject matter. And I was about to actually end my video research once I saw this because I thought it was a hoax, but um, we're going to progress anyways because what I found uh, completely contradicts that. This is one really weird detail that I just had to throw in this video, but continuing on. Religion of Peace also claimed to have served in the military until 1987, claiming he didn't have enough money to retire and thus sought a job in a computer-related technical field that would be easier on his older body, and uses this to explain his frequent browsing of Reddit. However, I would like to point out that if he actually served 20 to 30 years, it takes about 20 years of service in the military, generally speaking, to gain retirement benefits. So here we have another thing that is just even more questionable. Admittedly, though, he does seem to have some experience in something, as his post history is so centered around the subject matter of being a soldier and revolves around violence that it's hard to look the other way. Um, and despite all the evidence against his career, due to his many hours of commenting, just the sheer number of them, I do believe he has done some time somewhere in some form of service. His and his other use of military jargon does seem to match after researching around. In addition to that, I don't think a human would surround themselves with that subject matter forcefully for that matter of time. Moving on, Religion of Peace frequently posted about his obvious affinity for young girls, stating bluntly as an old man that he would quote, admire the scenery but not pick the flowers. This is creepy to say the least, and as I mentioned earlier, he was a moderator of the r slash jailbait subreddit, further solidifying himself into the pervert community. So we can say for certain at least one thing. A small detail that I haven't seen many point out when analyzing Religion of Peace post history is his technical skill with computers. He had a verifiable understanding of coding and would frequently post to the r slash programming subreddit as well. Something very uncharacteristic of an old man. The last thing we can glean from his post history is the frequent promotion of the website LakeCityQuietPills.com. That old guy's image hosting website, which is also the nickname of this site, which was a source of the Lake City Quiet Pills incident and was created as an image hosting website similar to Imgur or Photobucket, where users could upload photos and then link them across things like Reddit. This obviously was used for porn and had quite a bit of images 
on the site and quite a bit of users as well. So what do we actually know about the username Religion of Peace? Before concluding this section, let's summarize. He likely served some time in the military despite our dates not being exact. We do not know his exact age. We know he was a moderator in the r slash jailbait subreddit. We know he has experience as a programmer. And we also know he has a website called lakecityquietpills.com. And now that that's over with, we know who he is. It's time to finally get on to the, the story that involves this incident being set in motion. In July of 2009, a new user would make a post on the r slash all subreddit by the name of 26 stating the following, the end of religion of peace. He died today. I'm the person who provided religion of peace, the space for that old guy's image host. Milo died today. He was 79 years old. He died at his desk looking at your site. Milo was a mean old fucker, mean and ornery. He hooked me up with my first gig when I got out of the army. I didn't like finding him like that. Milo don't have any living relatives and no real friends. And other than his landlady and a few people where he worked, he didn't talk to anyone about much of anything. Me, he just tolerated. As I said, he was mean. I think he used that as a shield to keep people away from him. Milo thought God was some kind of con game thought up by some lazy sons of bitches who didn't want to work every day. So he's going into the fire on Monday without a service, just like he wanted. I'm planning to dump his ashes in the woods in PA near where he was born. Can't put them right there because there's a mall now. I gave the girl next door his raggedy old cat and most of his books. His computers and Tronic shit he tagged for the disabled vets in VVA. All the rest of the stuff is for the Salvation Army. All those years and everything he owned fits in the trunk of my car. I don't know what else to say. I'll miss him. Miserable bastard. So here we have a third party stepping in. Keeping in mind the name 26 for future reference as he claimed to have a relationship to Milo, aka Religion of Peace, aka ROP, he even goes as far as to give out coordinates to where the ashes were spread of Religion of Peace, which is actually a Holiday Inn in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Seeing as we know the name of Religion of Peace, Milo, I'm going to be referring to him as such from now on. As a result of Milo gaining such a reputation over the years on Reddit, when this post about his death was on the r slash all section, it managed to gain some traction, which led to about 650 upvotes, which isn't a lot by today's standard. However, in 2009, when Reddit didn't have nearly as much traffic, it was a slightly big event in some regard, whether intended or not. This naturally led users on Reddit to dig a bit deeper into what or who the guy was that died for the sake of curiosity. Some speculated whether or not this was a hoax meant to drive traffic to LakeCityQuietPills.com or the image hosting website. So people began to dig and what they found would actually blow this mystery wide open. To validate the claims of this 2-6 character, Redditors sought to make a connection and Redditors managed to dig up an old account from a website called Fark and found a user by the name of Angel26. Angel26 bio read the following, dispensing Lake City quiet pills to lousy bastards in need of a permanent rest since 1968. And this account had dated all the way back to 2001. Angel26's comment history was similar to that of Milo's or Religion of Pieces and dealt with detailing their favorite guns, ammunitions, and they appeared to have a history of military service as well. Notably though, Angel26 also had an email address, angel26 at lakecityquietpills.com, which was registered under his FARC account. If that wasn't enough, users also compared the writing styles of the post to Angel26, and it was pretty darn close. Angel misspelled some of the same words and used very similar incorrect apostrophes in his writing, which would be an insane amount of work to fake for an account going all the way back to 2001. So mystery hunters had their match, but what now? Well, people kept digging and digging, trying to uncover the meaning behind the Lake City Quiet Pills website name. Clearly, Angel had some connection, but what was the reason for naming the website, especially since it was used to host adult content? So why use the name LakeCityQuietPills.com? It doesn't exactly scream, hey, we have porn over here. In search of some kind of meaning, Redditors were led to the website and decided to dig a bit deeper. And upon looking at the source code of the website, they discovered a message board hidden in plain sight. These messages were dated and showed the true nature of what had been going on behind the scenes. And in the months to come, they would piece together a story unfolding silently in this corner of the internet. 
The posts on this hidden message board were predominantly job postings, but not job postings for your typical paradoxical entry-level job that requires two years' experience. No, they appear to be for some form of military contracting, bodyguards, or mercenary work. Funny enough, the day that Reddit user 26 posted the news of Religion of Peace dying, or Milo, an anonymous user on the message board posted the following on July 17th, 2009, hidden within the contents of LakeCityQuietPills.com. I'm sorry to tell you that old Milo died yesterday. He went quiet and calm, not like we all figured. I gave that fat mangy cat to the girl next door. No services or nothing. You know Milo. I'm taking his ashes to back where his farm was. Close to it anyways. There's a mall where his place was. So hoist a few for the old man. Remember what he said. Keep with the man who's got your back. Just calling back to what I said about um, the age not matching up of religion of peace. Here we had confirmation from a third party um, that was posted to seemingly no one at the time that this guy had died. So we have some form of confirmation here that appears to surpass this guy lying about his age or experience in the army. As noted earlier in the Reddit post, Angel26 was the one who provided hosting for the website. So this is clearly him posting. Alongside this post, there was also quite a few job postings that read the following. A number of these posts obviously featured a bunch of different acronyms. The most highly um, controversial acronym of them all was W slash W, whether it meant wet work or want slash warrants. Um, essentially, this would mean that if it was wet work, this had to involve um, murder or want slash warrants, meaning that they couldn't have a wanted arrest or anything out for them in a certain country. At the time of this happening, very few people actually realized um, the messages were on the website, and it took a while for this mystery to kind of unfold. It didn't really gain a lot of initial attention. Um, however, on September 30th, 2009, more than two months later after Milo died, um, Angel26 presumably posted, For those that have asked, I bricked Milo's iron key the same day. All is well. If you're unfamiliar with what an iron key is, it's essentially an encrypted flash drive. To brick a device, you're essentially making all the data on the device lost, rendering the device unusable and cleaned. This likely hints at the fact that this group of individuals on this message board was not involved in your typical military contracting or bodyguarding. This hints at some shady business. On November 14th, 2009, Angel26, or user26, posted again on the website, Milo's will cleared probate. Surprise, Milo was loaded. Email Shade if we sent you out in 2005 to 2009. Shade will have checks cut for you. Amount is by how many times, not by pay total. Small share is 3 to 4K. This part is interesting. Milo had a will for a group of individuals, or perhaps they were just the only ones to be left to, um, that he had alive. And in this message stating that anyone had been sent out in 2005 to 2009 would mean that these jobs had been going on for quite a bit of time. Um, and the fact that they're getting three to four thousand dollars is a decent amount of money that would match up with military contracting work. Also, in this message, we see a new individual referenced, Shade, who apparently has been handling payouts. Moving forward to January 2010, Angel 26 returned, this time with an announcement. Happy New Year, everyone. We're having a birthday party for the old man on the 19th. Party starts at 1500. At the usual, send your RSVP to Shade. FYI, we're booking a room for three days for anyone coming out of the area and overnight for locals. Come hoist one for Dutch Milo. While on the surface, it seems nice that these group of individuals would throw a party for their lost colleague. It is rumored that it was not a literal party per se, and rather something else due to the message that was sent out the following day before the party. We got 38 rooms in the Marriott on 46. Shade has the key cards for locals. Pick up at the party. Give your travel name to the desk and that's it. No ID needed. We're covering the bill. Keep the room service under 500, okay? The phones there are not secure. Bus from hotel leaves at 1330. Car service vouchers for return trip when you're ready to crash. Don't DUI. If they're traveling for leisure, why would they worry about the phone lines? Why would they need a travel name? And why would a group of adults be reminded to not drive under the influence? All of this seemed to hint at something else going on here. Well, coincidentally, on January 19th at 3 p.m. local time, a very intricate assassination would take place in Dubai at the exact same time listed on the party invitation. 
On January 19th, 2010, Mahmoud al Mabu, which, pardon me if I said that wrong, who was a Hamas leader involved in the organization and logistics of weapons for Hamas, um, was traveling alone under a fake name and with no security guards. Earlier that day, his trip had been preceded by a small network of men and women, numbering around two dozen in total. These individuals had arrived in Dubai using fake names and passports of their own and began coordinating their efforts to track down Al Mabu. I will leave the security footage of this coordinated assassination to see the full extent of what went on here, but there's about 27 minutes of security footage, so to save time, I'll ultimately leave that up to you. The gist of what happened is as follows. A group of assassins tracked the Hamas leader to his room, uh, waited for him to leave to go shopping, snuck into his room and gained access somehow, and waited for the guy to come back, and lastly, took him out. Now, not only does the date line up exactly and time of this assassination to the Lake City Quiet Pills website and their party, but also, interestingly enough, some of the suspects involved in this assassination were given credit cards from Storm Lake in Iowa, which is a town over to Lake City, Iowa. And if you're wondering how Lake City, Iowa plays into this other than Lake City Quiet Pills, um, if you remember Angel 2-6's signature on FARC, it was essentially dispensing Lake City quiet pills to lousy bastards in need of permanent rest since 1968. And if you actually do a Google search for Lake City, Iowa quiet pills, what most people have agreed upon is the fact that Lake City quiet pills is based off the ammunition plant in based in Lake City, which is one of the U.S.'s largest manufacturers for bullets. So quiet pills are bullets. That's how the connection here is made. The fact that that town is one over and less than an hour away would point that some of the people who are involved with this might be local to that area. A couple weeks after the event happened, um, what was posted onto the Lake City Quiet Pills website was the following. Here's the final for the party. Hotel rooms, 48,341. Limo, 6,080. Bus, 569. Bar bill, 18,890. Food, 8,030. Dancers, 8,300. Miscellaneous tips, 850. Miscellaneous expenses, 2840. Medical supplies, 180. Fat Tommy and Stu are okay too. Total, 94,080. You did all Dutch Milo proud. Thanks. 94,000 sounds like quite a bit for a party, but there's no way to say for certain what actually all this itemization is about. After a few weeks later, more and more people began to link up the world events, and this started to gain even more attention. So what used to be an easy read text documenting all the job postings on this website had become encrypted. Redditors trying to see what was behind this encryption and what was on the website thereafter led them to see it get encrypted again. And then right after that, the website was taken down completely. Today, the only thing we have left is the Wayback Machine or the archives of the site left over. Moving on to the analysis of this entire situation, as it's very hard to bring this all together, there's so many little details, and this is one of those very bizarre internet oddities. I will say, after studying up on this incident, I don't see enough evidence at all to conclusively say that these guys were linked to any assassinations. The only evidence that it links to assassination are the credit cards, which are from Storm Lake, like I said, which still isn't Lake City. It's a town over, even though it's 50 minutes away, which is hardly enough to stand on to link the two. The only real connection comes from the exact timing. Other than that, I would just say it's a coincidence. Likely, what I think this was, was a group of military contract workers. Uh, Angel26 even says in the Reddit post that Milo got him a job after he got out of the military. So via way of Occam's razor, this would make the most sense. As to what these guys were involved in is next to impossible to say. Many people believe this to be a hoax as well, but I would disagree. The FARC account dated all the way back to 2001 that went to Angel26, and on top of that, why would a site encrypt its message board right after being discovered, then completely nuke the site? All of that does not add up to this being a hoax. And the weirdest thing that no one has explored um, other than one little Reddit thread that I found on the Lake City Quiet Pills website that barely gained any attention is what I want to leave you with at the end of this video. Okay, so... This is pretty ominous. If you actually look up Religion of Peace's Reddit username on a website called Snoop Snoo, which allows you to gain more information about Redditors, it shows that his last post was actually made in 2019. Okay, so uh, if I look at his post history, he has no posts at all, which is very bizarre because this guy's dead. Okay, so this leaves us with two possibilities. Someone either made a post under a private subreddit, which would be the reason for the post not being shown at his profile, um, or 
Snoop Snoo is glitching out. Um, this also happens with um, user 26 as well, meaning he's posted in 2019 as well. So these guys might still be around, which is weird. Either way, this is an incredibly interesting rabbit hole, incredibly interesting mystery, and the speculation is still wide open because nothing is conclusive here. Um, there's no shortage of speculation, but what I recommend is that you actually go through this for yourself if you're still interested. Um, this thing is one of my favorite internet oddities just because it has so much substance to keep your imagination going. Whatever happened with Lake City Quiet Pills, one thing is for sure, it is a genuine internet mystery that I hope you enjoyed exploring with me today. That's all for me today. Good night.